Hello, you multi modified malleable malt militants. Yeah, that's a malt mention. I'm Ralphie. Welcome to the Bothy. I review whiskey because I've been drinking whiskey for the last 35 years and I quite enjoy it, but it's got to be quality, not quantity. I'm not here to get pished. I want to remain sober so I can appreciate the fine smells and the fine tastes of assortments of single malt whiskey and other quality spirits. And I've just poured myself a glass of this. This is Red Breast, cask strength 12 year old, and I'm going to talk about it just shortly. In the meantime, thank you to Ricardo for providing the malt mention. This is Ralphie Review 963, and it's part of a series on presenting my interpretation, my review of the Oswa winners 2022. So that's oswa.co.uk. Very, very rem memorable, rememberable. Um, website so go along and check it out it is self-funding by online enthusiasts through my patreon channel called ralphie and roy duff from aquavit aquavit and um, his his channel patreon subscribers so there's no finance from the industry and we invite onliners and people who are aware of the whiskey industry but don't work directly inside it to, to nominate um, a short list of six whiskies or six bottles of spirits in nine categories all right so now this particular category was best non-malt whiskey so any whiskey from anywhere in the world that is not exclusively made 100% from malted barley. Now, red breast is partially made from malted barley and the rest of it is made from unmalted barley, which tends to work when you're triple distilling and you get a slightly lower yield, but you get a loads of extra green note, slightly resinous aromatic flavors. And this is something that's been an absolute mainstay for Irish whiskies reputation and I'm going to come back to that at the end of this video. Let's just actually review this and while I'm doing it I'll tell you about the other nominations in this category and what I think of them. 12 years old and bottled at 58.3% excuse me I'm going to double check that 56.3% 56.3% glad I checked that and um, this is a very traditional style of Irish whiskey it's chill filtered it's most likely got E150 burnt sugar scorched sugar industrial caramel colouring added to make it look nicer because the colour's not naturally coming from the cask. And when I start to review this, you'll notice that um, I'm not actually that taken with the casks that the makers of this whisky use at their Middleton distillery in the south of Ireland. And it's owned by Pernod Ricard. And I think they've been really resting on the laurels with Irish whisky. They do produce some really good stuff. You get Pow uh, Powers John's Lane, 12 year old which I think is superior to this definitely it's just got more character um, and you also get uh, spot you get green spot blue spot yellow spot red spot which is a sort of independent bottling of these traditional pots still Irish whiskies from Middleton and frankly they're excellent they're really really good and that's probably the reason why prices are climbing up quite steeply now Anyway, back to this, This um, I was about to say single malt, um, but it's not. Back to this blended whiskey, a blend of malted and unmalted barley. With whiskey from Ireland, people are looking for something that's not Scotch, it's not English, it's got a different singular Irish identity and 
Ireland is capable of amazing things with whiskey. There used to be hundreds of distilleries in Ireland. Then Prohibition came along and then they get wiped out, they get taken over, they get closed down. There was the, the, the temperance movement was strong in Ireland because the overconsumption of intoxicating litka has been very much a, um, a custom and practice in Irish uh, society for generations as it is in most societies, to be honest. Light, aromatic, unpeated, pears, melon, green notes, camphor, slight mintiness. I'm getting some quite bitter oak coming through here that you get from casks that have been used again and again and again and again. Something slightly acrid. Something slightly stewed tea note. It's not coming from the grain. It's more likely coming from the casks. I'm going to have a wee sip of this. A tiny wee sip. Sharp. Nippy. Sweetens up. In the development. Aromatic. Slightly resinous, kiwi fruit, pineapple, mango, banana, a nice rich cereal note, but bitter cereal, sour cereal note. And then there's quite a lot of alcoholic heat on the finish. At this point, I'm going to add some water. But something I highly recommend, malt mates, if you're adding any water to this 56.3% whiskey, don't add much because it's very easy to drown this. And a whiskey which is very easily drowned with the addition of water at a relatively young age is a sign of less active casks. Personally, I think this is going downhill. I've tasted this several times in the past, several times, three or four times over the last 15 years. As Irish whiskey has got more and more international attention, directed at very few brands, the demand and supply ratio has greatly changed. So with greatly increased demand, the blenders and preparers and makers of these whiskies have got to go into the warehouses and say, you know, in the early days we could use good casks. Now we've got an established brand that's selling itself. Now we have to use less good casks. Now the result is that you've got a competent whisky here. It's not a bad whisky, don't get me wrong, but it's not what it can be and it's really not what it should be. I can say these things because I bought this bottle. I buy 99.999% of everything I review with my own money out of a shop. This means that I do not get prepared samples. I don't get journalists samples or journalists bottles which are always flattering and complimentary. I get what the punters are buying because I, the reviewer sitting here in the bothy, I'm a punter too. I'm in the same position as you. This gives me the freedom to really tell you what I really think. Simples. The nose holds its own slightly toffee hint of mocha. The, the, the green fruit subsided. There's a little bit more caramelised citrus fruit going on. Tunched hunt. Again, we're coming back to pineapple, slight pineapple note and melon. That little, there's just enough identity there to make it work, but not enough to really draw you in and excite you. I've added just enough water. Couldn't add any more. Significant improvement. Serious improvement. But I've added 
three millilitres of water. I've added just half a teaspoon to a ca glass, 225 mil pour. So it's still well above 40% in the glass. And it needs to be to actually deliver what's actually there. And what's there is some lovely green tangy uh, malted and unmalted barley with quite a lot of unmalted. The, the presence of the unmalted is quite significant. It's, it dominates. Um, pineapples, pears, soft barley sugars, um, mild mint, the overt green notes, they're passive, so the mint, green phenol notes, winter green, that sort of range that you really closely associate with pure pot still Irish whisky, it's really not there in any significance. Still improving. The cask presence is becoming a little more assertive in a positive way. This whisky is far, far, not far better when you just add a drop of water. So if you're in the presence of someone who's still a diehard traditionalist who says, um, if you ever add water to whisky, you'll be cursed for life, ignore them, particularly if you've paid for the whisky in the glass in front of you because you're getting really bad advice from people who are just stuck in the past and stuck in their own personal dogmas. There you go. Now, apart from, just before I give the malt mark here, the other whiskies which were in this category of best non-malt were starting off with a bourbon, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Um, that's good whiskey. That is good American whiskey. If you want to taste a bourbon outside the USA, where choices are very limited now because of demand inside the USA, um, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is a stalwart and a stable, um, dependable, high strength American whiskey. Bourbon. Bourbon whiskey. You know what I mean. Then we've got Four Roses Single Barrel, which would be my choice, to be honest. Four Roses Single Barrel. I think I'll review it later this year, because it's been a while since I've reviewed a bourbon. And I really like Four Roses. Four, Four Roses is a brand, I, I just feel they treat me with more respect. They don't overcharge and they don't flannel things up with absurdities and, and freakish control of supply and demand to, to get the circus going. That's not Four Roses' way, and they have a, an affordable, high-strength, single-barrel version of their whiskey. It's really good stuff. I'm going to review it for you. It would be my choice in this category, not the Red Breast. But the Red Breast, um, very popular winner. Very popular with people who don't live in Ireland but want an Irish whiskey experience. Loch Lomond Single Grain, peated. Wouldn't be my choice. Rather young, rather fresh, and I think Loch Lomond still to find its feet. It made the nomination, so good luck to Loch Lomond. Definitely big changes there. Uh, Red Breast 12 year old cask strength, which won on the Democratic votes. So anybody could register and place a vote who's into whiskey. So this is, an, this is the most democratic way of doing it. One person, one vote for one, for one winner. Then we've got Wild Turkey 101, very popular um, American whiskey and very uh, consistently decent quality, a consistently decent price and you can't go wrong. So if you want to get to know American whiskies, buy T Wild Turkey 101. And then you've got the upmarket version called Wild Turkey Rare Breed, which would in fact be my choice. Costs a little bit more, but you're getting a lot more wild turkey, a lot more wildness in that turkey, in that particular bottling. So that's my penny's worth. Just sharing. That's what I'm a review channel. That's what I do. <sighs> because I'm just giving an opinion. And to conclude, a mark for this um, red breast. I think the 15 year old is better 
and not that much more expensive. I've got to look through my selection to see if I've got, I, I've got whiskey, whiskey with an EY, because that's what this is. Blended malt. It's blended whiskey. 80 out of 100. There you go. My review is done. If you want to pop back again shortly for my next review, which is 962 extras, I'm just going to give you an overview of where I think Irish whiskey is at in 2023. I'm just going to give you a nice brief overview to help you get your bearings when you go out to buy Irish whiskey. Okay, okay. And that's us, we're done and dusted, so I'm going to lift up my Clyde clicker with a big red button, because the big red button means stop. If it was a green button, it would mean start. But I don't have a green button in this, only a red button. So, it's definitely a stop. Although I can start it as well. Even though I don't have a green button. You know what I mean. <laughs>